Hello, my name is Annalisa Adams Quatier, and I'm part of the Skull Foundation team. I'm excited to welcome you to this forum session, Movies and Mindset, Sharing Stories to Shift Systems. If you joined us yesterday, you know that the forum's, the forum's theme is closing the distance, and we thought of no better way to reflect that theme than to invite our global network to design and build a new kind of experience together. Before we get started, I wanna share with you a couple of things. One, this session is being recorded and will be released publicly after the event. Two, please feel free to engage in the chat with each other, but also ask questions of our speaker. The next thing is, is this session is about, will run about 60 minutes. And then after that, please take time to complete the single question survey that we have in the poll tab that's on your video screen. And finally, on social media, we're using the hashtag Skull WF, and we would love for you to do the same, to engage, invite your, your networks, and share in the learnings. We are so thrilled to be able to include this session as part of this year's forum and want to extend a special thank you to participant for proposing and designing it. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to your session host, Holly Gordon, Chief Impact Officer with Participant. Hi, Annalisa. Thanks so much for that beautiful introduction. And thank you all for joining our session. I'm Holly Gordon. And I'm Samantha Wright. And as you just heard from Annalisa, Samantha and I both work at Participant, which is a film studio based in LA that was originally founded by Jeff Skoll in 2006 to use storytelling as a way to accelerate social change. And for those of you who may not have heard of Participant, some of the movies that we've made you, that you might have heard of are An Inconvenient Truth, Waiting for Superman, and Spotlight. And just recently, uh, just released in February actually, Judas and the Black Messiah, which you'll hear more about in a minute. Thank you everyone for coming to our session today. We're so excited to be here. And just a little bit about Holly and I, we met working at Girl Rising, a global campaign for girls education with a film at the center. And we've been collaborating ever since for 10 years now, all at the intersection of film and social change. And we now find ourselves just so lucky to fe feeling so lucky to work a participant where we get the opportunity to work with some of the greatest artists of our time who through their stories are shedding light on some of the most important issues of our time. And we're learning a ton along the way. Thrilled to be here with all of you at the Squirrel World Forum and hoping to share a little bit about what we're discovering. As we've been thinking about the theme of the forum, Closing the Gap, at Participant, we're trying to close the gap between art and activism because there's so much potential in the power of both to help us transform the future. So just to give you a sense of what's to come today, this is a 40 minute presentation that's focused on using movies as a tool for change. And as you listen, um, as Annalisa said, please do use the chat and here are some questions for you to ponder. How could you use movies to advance your work? And what values or principles need to ground us as we seek to advance progress as a full community? So please do post your thoughts and questions throughout the presentation and our teammate, Jen Gottsfeld, who's been an incredible thought partner in this work every step of the way, will be dropping helpful links into the chat as we're talking that, that relate to the presentation. And then she'll surface your questions at the end and Samantha and I will do our best to answer them. So with that, welcome and let's get started. So as we've been hearing in so many of the talks from yesterday and today, we're in an urgent moment in history where we have to reimagine the systems that govern our lives. And yet so often we feel far too small to play a role in shaping systems change. But we're not too small. And today we'll share one way everyone can shape the future using a widely accessible and powerful tool Movies. Now, what do we mean by systems change? We're hearing a lot, a lot more about systems change these days. And for the purposes of this presentation, this is how we're defining it. 
We're talking about things like the policies and practices and institutions that work together to organize our society. And what we found is that systems change work requires a very particular way of thinking, one that starts to look beyond the individual parts and focuses on the dynamics shaping the whole, how those parts come together. In this work, we ask, what direction are these dynamics moving? Which kind of outcomes are getting reinforced? For example, are the dynamics moving us toward justice, toward a healthier planet? And as you all know, and why we're all here is that when we look at our systems today, unfortunately, far too many aren't working. Our health system has kept poor people sick and made sick people poor. Our economic system concentrates wealth in the hands of a few. And as we gather this week at the Skull World Forum, we are joined by hundreds of people like you trying to address these broken systems like the amazing Stacey Abrams and Jose Andres, who we heard from yesterday. And whether it's the criminal justice system or the education system or our system of government, what I'm sure you found as we have is that when the dynamics of the system work against our goals, making progress is like swimming upstream, fighting the current. So how do we shift the current? If you're here at the forum, it's not gonna be news to you that shifting the current is really, really hard without creating the demand for change. And what we've seen again and again in our work is that stories and specifically movies can actually create that demand. What the science tells us is that stories create shared consciousness. They can unlock new energy and create the space and sparks for us to imagine a different future. And it all happens through very importantly, an emotionally resonant, immersive, two hour shared experience. And I know this might sound crazy or just crazily simple, but we believe that movies are one of the most underutilized tools to drive systems change today. What we've seen again and again in our work is that good stories are like magic. A great story can literally transform a person's life. It can shift their beliefs and alter their understanding about what's true in the world forever. And best of all, whether it's my teenage kids, my 99 year old dad, or my best friend, everybody I know loves watching a great movie. So today, with all of you, rather than unpacking the craft of making great movies, which is a real art, we're gonna focus on how we can use movies that exist already to shift the currents of social systems, making it easier for all of us to achieve our social change goals. Now, movies can be actually used to change, to make change in lots of creative ways. Today, we're gonna to zoom in on a few high leverage ways that we've found to be particularly impactful. We've found that movies can help to accelerate narrative change. They can help strengthen networked collaboration and they can help us shift our mental models in ways that are more important today than ever before. Our hope is that you'll leave today's presentation inspired to experiment with the magical and mysterious power of movies as an entry point for you to scale and accelerate your work. So let's dive in. How can we use movies to accelerate new narratives? Well, first, what do we mean by narratives? This is how we think about them. Narratives are the stories we tell ourselves about what's true. Narratives take root because we've heard that truth a hundred different ways, a hundred different times, like girls are bad at math, or if you just work hard, you'll succeed. And so we believe it and we believe it's true. And that truth takes hold across our community and society. And that truth shapes the way we do everything. I've got this pinned on my wall. 
one of it's it's by one of the foremost experts on narrative change Bridget Evans of the Pop Culture Collaborative. And she describes a recipe for systems change rooted in narrative that is clear and powerful. I'm gonna read it to you now. Um, Widespread cultural change is most reliably achieved when mass audiences are immersed over time in new narrative environments powered by a multitude of coordinated story experiences that express diverse and complex perspectives while also carrying the same core ideas and narratives. In short, share stories whose core ideas are the same again and again and again. Now, when looking at how to do this with movies, this is how we've been translating the science into practice. A bit like a recipe for narrative change we look to create coordinated movie experiences that have these three ingredients. First, unify. You, new narratives stick better if more people are saying the same thing. To concentrate. New narratives take off from a critical mass, so it can often help to focus on building energy in particular places, in particular communities. And three, network. Changing narratives takes time. So consider ways to reinforce a network of media and messengers who can keep amplifying a new narrative over the long term. We call this building narrative infrastructure. Now in today's presentation, we're gonna use a few participant case studies, bring all of these ideas to life, but I really wanna emphasize that there just are so many wonderful movies out there to bring into this work. So with that, let's kick off with our first case study, which is as promised, Judas and the Black Messiah. Here's the trailer for the film. Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton of the Illinois Black Panther Party. Repeat after me. Looking at 18 months for the stolen car, five years for impersonating a federal officer, or you can go home. The Black Panthers are forming a rainbow coalition of oppressed brothers and sisters of every color. Their aim is to sow hatred and inspire terror. I will learn all that I can. I will learn all These ain't no terrorists. You can murder a liberator, but you can't murder a liberation. You can murder a revolutionary, but you can't murder a revolution. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder a freedom. So this is a campaign that's actually live for us right now. And it's rooted in the idea that most Americans believe the negative narrative that the Black Panther Party was a terrorist organization, as opposed to community leaders who made positive contributions to society at the height of the civil rights movement. And with this film, our goal has been to accelerate narratives around that positive legacy of the Black Panther Party and to highlight the connection between the Panthers' foundational contributions and today's movement for Black lives. And I can't get enough of that trailer. It just gives me chills every time. So what does it look like to unify around a new narrative? In the Judas campaign, the film has been a way to bring together a range of organizations and activists across generations 
around some shared messages. These messages have oriented around the Black Panther Party's positive contributions to society, like their groundbreaking breakfast programs and the innovative community health efforts that they launched. And we've tried to make sure the messages always center the voice of the people with lived experience, so former Black Panthers and the activists who are on the front lines doing the work today. So here's an invitation to a screening, and I know it's hard to see, but it, the, the, the idea is it shows the range of allies that are coming together around this film. Panthers, community leaders, creators, and young activists. And of course, there have been many, many people and organizations who've been doing this work for years, who we've partnered with, like the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, Live Free, the folks at the Huey P. Newton Foundation, and, and Chairman Hampton's son, son Fred uh, Hampton Jr. What's been exciting to see is how movie screenings offer a powerful way to unify support around their efforts to shift the narrative, to correct history, if you will, about the legacy of the Black Panther Party. All right, our second ingredient in shifting narratives with film is to concentrate. And to create the conditions for ideas to spread, we look to concentrate energy in a community. What we know from the research is that ideas spread through overlapping social reinforcement. One place we're seeing energy concentrating around the film is in Chicago, where Fred Hampton led the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party. And here you have one event, particular event in Chicago, which brought together civic leaders from across the city and where for the very first time, a Cook County official publicly recognized the Black Panther Party's positive contributions to the community. And soon after this, there was another screening at DePaul University, the largest Catholic university in the States based in Chicago and local media covered the story along the way and with movies, this can happen again and again, screening in conversation, screening in conversation. By concentrating energy in one community, in this case around Chicago, the hope is that a critical mass starts to build that can spread the narrative to other places. And on a quick aside, like many people in quarantine, I've also been baking a lot of bread. And when I think of this kind of narrative change work, this idea of concentrating reminds me a lot of the amazing power of starter yeast. A couple tablespoons is the beginning of something incredible. To extend the metaphor, the third ingredient in our recipe is build the network. Consider ways to reinforce a network of media and messengers who can amplify the new narrative over the long term. We call this building narrative infrastructure. What's been really awesome to see is how Judas is engaging a whole bunch of people from journalists to movie stars to activists who are coming to lift up the Black Panther Party's positive legacy. And our hope is that this network of media and messaging around the same core ideas and the same long-term goals will keep repeating this narrative well into the future. That's how narrative change begins and ultimately how it sticks. So to round this out, here's what the work has looked like in action. I am proud to introduce Chairman Fred Hampton of the Black Panther Party. Hello, my friend. Good to see you. How are you doing? Hello, Shaka. My name is Linda Sarsour. Thank you, sir. I'll talk to you. Great to be here with you, dear brother. Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton of the Illinois Black Panther Party. If you have a lot of love for your own in the face of all the fear, you can do things that are almost unheard of. And that's what Chairman Fred and the Black Panthers of the Illinois chapter proved. It's like you said, self-love is a revolutionary and liberated act. The film is so relevant to the movement right now. Like if you took Fred Hampton out and you put some black and brown organizers of today, you would literally can replicate the entire film with images of movements today. I'd also love to know, you know, what does the phrase all power to all the people, what does that mean to you? Yeah, power to the people, you know, I mean, I think, you know, if we can institute change, and that's the way that you do it.
<sighs> unify, concentrate, network. Unify, concentrate, network. Align enough people in this way over time. And what we've seen is that you can accelerate new narratives that can shift the currents, the system you're working in. Here at Participant as a film studio, we're really grateful to organize around a slate of films every year. But what we want to emphasize is that there's just a ton of amazing films out there that can be part of a coordinated narrative strategy. And as we look to keep reckoning with America's history of racial injustice, what we've been inspired by is the power of some of our recent titles like When They See Us, Just Mercy, and John Lewis, Good Trouble. And we're really eager to imagine with all of you here today, how could we better come together, united around movies like these, to shift the dynamics of the system? So we've just spent some time at seeing how important networks can be to accelerating narrative change. And we want to underscore and explore it further. Because this idea as a film, as a tool for strengthening networks is one of the highest leverage ways that we see to drive systems change through film. And for wisdom on building for systems change, we've turned to another thought leader, Adrienne Marie Brown, who wrote the book, Emergent Strategy. Here's a quote that I love. Oak trees don't set an intention to listen to each other better or agree to hold tight to each other when the next storm comes. Under earth, always, they reach for each other. They grow such that their roots are intertwined and create a system of strength that is as resilient on a sunny day as it is in a hurricane. As we look to shift the currents of a system and address the root causes of social problems, once again, what we see in the science and in the practice is that resilient networks are critical to doing this work well. There were actually some great talks yesterday that explored this idea of networks even further. So if you didn't catch them live, I, I urge you to check them out when you have a chance. What I'm sure many of you have seen in your own work is that resilient networks with their abundance of overlapping ties come with a ton of different benefits from better facing those hurricanes that Adrian Marie Brown wrote about to more effectively adapting to changing environments, to creating the conditions for community led solutions to emerge and then reach scale. For all these reasons and many more, we're really passionate about investing in strong networks to shift systems. And as it turns out, movie screen screenings are a really effective way to knit more folks together and to grow and reinforce these networks. So when looking at how to do this with movies, here's another recipe that we use. We try to create a series of movie experiences that follow these three steps. The first is bridge. Look at the network around your issue. Where might you be able to bridge across communities? Use movies to create new and stronger connections that could be powerful to advance your work. Spark. Turns out that just bringing people together isn't enough. We have to design and create the conditions to really deepen the quality of the relationships by creating space for sparks. And third, rally. Once you've built new and deepened relationships, rally around a near-term win. These near-term wins help to cement the relationships across the network and provide really invaluable momentum to the long-term work of systems change. So now let's look at our next case study, the film Dark Waters. Here's the trailer. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains. Hi, Grammar. What are you doing here? <laughs> Your grandma tells me her grandson's some fancy environment lawyer down in Cincinnati. I am a corporate defense attorney. 
So? I defend chemical companies. Well, now you can defend me. How many did you lose? 190. 190 cows. You tell me nothing's wrong here. It's a small matter for a family friend. Help a guy who needs it. The farmer or you? That's chemicals, I'm telling you. I'm seeing documents I don't understand. They're hiding something. That chemical. What if you drank it? Drank it? It's like saying, what if I swallowed a tire? What if whatever's killing those cows is in the drinking water? At DuPont, better living through chemistry. It's our DNA. You need to tell me what in the hell's going on. DuPont is knowingly poisoning 70,000 local residents for the last 40 years. You knew, still you did nothing. You want to flush your career down the toilet for some cow hand? You want to take everything that you know and turn it against an iconic American company like an informant. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yes. They have all the money, all the firepower, and they'll use it. I know. I was one of them. Our government is captive to DuPont. They're trying to force you to make me stop. He was willing to risk his job, his family, for a stranger who needed his help. The system is rigged. They want us to think it'll protect us. Protect us. We do. So this is a campaign we launched in late 2019. And we focused the campaign on this big problem. Far too many corporations pollute the environment with massive impacts on public health and are getting away with it. Our laws and institutions are failing to protect us. With this film, we worked with partners to use movie screenings to create more demand for state protections against those chemicals called PFAS or what we call them, or what they're also known as is forever chemicals. And this has led us to really focus on strengthening the network around the movement. So how do you use movies to build bridges and strengthen networks? What we found to be key here is using screenings as opportunities to bring different groups and stakeholders together who might agree, but don't always share space. And it's been really effective as we do this work to really think and consider a mix of big and little or national and local organizations and personalities and helping use movies to bring them together. Here's a, a, an example from Dark Waters. The campaign has focused on supporting networks in Colorado, where a series of screening events created bridges, connecting a range of advocacy groups across the state. And there were the big players you'd expect, like the Sierra Club here. But there were also lots of grassroots organizations and activists central to the movement. Working together over and over again around this movie created a really exciting opportunity for everyone to learn how to better partner. It allowed them to connect more deeply and it created more shared power. And this ultimately helped precipitate a big win, the first ever PFAS regulations in Colorado. So how do you use movies to create space for sparks? It turns out it's all about investing in event design so that you can improve the quality, not just the quantity of relationships. And what science tells us is that the more time people have with each other or the more intense and formative an experience, the deeper their bonds become. So you can use movie screenings to design ex spaces, experiences, and programs that intentionally foster deeper relationships. In Dark Waters, what that looked like was in some of our work was focused on North Carolina, 
where contamination from forever chemicals is causing a lot of harm because it's po polluting people's drinking water. So during the campaign planning phase, we used conference calls to provide the space for sparks. Dozens of organizations came together week after week to think about ways that they could use the film to get the state government to act. And so by the time the screenings happened across the state, those sparks could turn into fire. When you use movies to organize, you can turn sparks into fire again and again and again. And when I look at this photo, I just wanted to share gratitude for one of this campaign's biggest allies, Mark Ruffalo, who's there over towards the, the right-hand side of the picture, who's actually gonna be speaking tomorrow um, alongside Gloria Walton, the CEO of the Solutions Project at the closing plenary. So please be sure not to miss it. Finally, our third step. What we found is it is critical to rally around a specific call to action and near-term win. While the goal ultimately may be strengthening the network for the long term, there's just way more energy if there's something immediate and specific to rally around. This helps create the conditions to better bridge and spark, and it cements the relationships for the long term. In each place we worked, Colorado, North Carolina, with Congress and the EU, we rallied around specific wins, and here are the results. Since its premiere, the film Dark Waters has touched the lives of millions with one simple truth. This level of political corruption has essentially poisoned people's blood. For decades, companies have polluted our water with dangerous chemicals known as PFAS, or forever chemicals. The film Dark Waters tells the story of Rob Blot, played by Mark Ruffalo, a corporate defense attorney turned environmental hero, after committing his life to defending the public from forever chemicals. DuPont is knowingly poisoning 70,000 local residents for the last 40 years. With the film in hand, we created the Fight Forever Chemicals campaign to sound the alarm on a public health crisis that has been unspoken and invisible. Basically, what they call forever chemicals are long chain fluorocarbons designed to withstand any kind of breakdown. Together with our partners around the world, we asked audiences to join us in the fight. New communities are waking up almost every day. In the US, we encouraged consumers to stop buying products made with forever chemicals and gave them a way to reach out to their own representatives to create change. We traveled to DC where Mark, Rob, and a host of other advocates met with lawmakers on the Hill to create the change we all need. The most important source of information about the threats posed by these chemicals comes from the industry itself. We've seen it on DuPont and 3M letterhead. We know that these chemicals cause cancer because they knew. We visited key cities across the globe while mobilizing community members, activists, and lawmakers to lift up the stories of those directly affected by Forever Chemicals. We are Dark Waters. Launching the Why We Fight series. I fight for my family. I fight for justice and accountability. My mother was pregnant while she directly worked with the chemical. I fight for life. They're calling on state lawmakers to address public health concerns and hold polluters accountable. The taxpayers shouldn't be the ones paying for these costs. It should be the chemical manufacturers, and we need to keep driving for action. Dark Waters shares the story about one community in Parkersburg, West Virginia, but it's really telling the story of something that's happening all across the world. In Europe, we presented to the European Parliament. More and more evidence is put there that these group of chemicals can have serious health effects. Unbelievable that we have allowed it to go to this extent. We didn't, they did. Indeed. In the UK, we convened with members of parliament to encourage stronger regulations. If I look at us in Europe, I do think we can do a lot better. We really hope you learn more about this issue and how it affects your life and your health. It's in the packaging, it's in our textiles, it's in our carpets, it's in what we wear, it's in our cosmetics, it's that far. These new political commitments impact over 500 million people in the EU and could help set global standards on PFAS. And most recently, the EU Commission on Chemicals announced a total phase-out and ban on PFAS in Europe. When COVID hit, we mobilized and went virtual. 
and our work became even more important. We really have to address this PFAS contamination. It decreases the effectiveness of vaccinating, especially in our children. The kids, this is what it's all about right now. What are we leaving them? This is a battle that is in everyone's backyard. For veterans, it's time to fight. And this is the action that we are encouraging everyone to take. Every one of us can stand up, speak out, and make a difference. So thank you. Thank you for taking action. Thank you for making your voice heard. And thank you to our partners who are still fighting to create a better world for all of us. To learn more and join the movement, visit fightforeverchemicals.com. So the ingredients behind that video, bridge, spark, rally. Bridge, spark, rally. What we see in dark waters, we see over and over again, with film after film. If you can build a network approach into your campaign strategy and you do it over and over again, you can evolve systems through relatively small interactions. It's powerful stuff that creates the conditions for change to build gradually over time and then come all at once. And as we look beyond the participant library and think about how one might build networks around an issue like protecting the environment, you can imagine the possibilities to bridge, spark, and rally by creating a series of narrative experiences with films like Chasing Ice, Chasing Coral, and My Octopus Teacher. There are so many movies out there that you can organize in themes and use to strengthen resilient networks in all kinds of systems. All right, the third way um, we're gonna dive into how movies can help shift systems. Well, actually it has nothing really to do with the movies and instead starts by shifting our own mental models about how we make change. Using a highly, highly distributed tool like movies has pushed us both to do a ton of rethinking. We're actively trying to unlearn old habits and relearn new approaches for building in an interconnected world where frankly, old models of power are expiring. And here's our biggest insight, which I've heard echoed in so many of the other sessions here at the, here at the forum. We need a paradigm shift around shaping social change. And here are three ways we've had to shift the way we work. The first way is moving from linear near-term strategy to generational non-linear emergent strategy that's rooted in a set of values that embraces uncertainty and is open to a range of possibilities and outcomes. Now, to be clear, this can be deeply uncomfortable because it violates how most of us have been trained and how most impact is designed, measured, and judged. The second shift for us is moving from hierarchical structures, so leader-led, to diffuse networks, leader-full. Think 10,000 candles, not just one spotlight. And we're learning to embrace a shift in our work from centralized action to distributed action. And this means investing in broad alignment and building ever greater connections across a network. It means empowering many leaders, not just one central hero. And the third way we've tried to shift our work is by playing the long game together rather than a short game alone. And what that means is moving from organization focus to field focus, moving from a frame of competition to a frame of collaboration. So in short, don't own the change. Instead, find more ways to accelerate the work together. And of course, this also violates centuries of us versus them indoctrination in business and in the nonprofit world. So as we round to a close, a few final thoughts to share with you. What I hope you've taken away today is something we're both so passionate about. Movies 
are one of the most underutilized systems change tools we have today. And that we can create demand for a different future by using movies to accelerate narratives and strengthen networks. And if you do this as a regular strategic practice, you will be amazed at the results and wonder why you didn't do it sooner. More fundamentally, we've learned that we need new models of change making to really address the systemic challenges we face. So a few closing questions. To make this shift, how can we come together more and come together more effectively? How can we do a better job of aligning around shared narratives across organizations and between movements? How can we make our networks stronger and more resilient? And how can we all practice new models of behavior that lean into collaboration and that can shift systems faster? No surprises here. We've got one suggestion for you. Let's start by watching some great movies together. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. We're really eager to hear your thoughts and questions. Ruby and Jen are going to send some over that you shared in the chat, and we'll do our best to answer them. And while we get ready to answer the questions, we thought we'd share some of the thinking that we've been doing around particular areas of focus in participants' upcoming slate that we hope intersects with your work and can help to accelerate the change that you're seeking to make. And maybe we can do it together. So just a little bit of a preview from us is that building on two years of releases that have included When They See Us, Just Mercy, John Lewis Good Trouble, and Judas, we're continuing to develop projects that call on us to redesign for racial equity, to close gaps of understanding and belonging, and to reckon with America's history of racial injustice. We also have some powerful content coming along that focuses on our public health system and challenges us to invest in the future so we never experience a pandemic like this one again. So to make sure that our health systems are robust, equitable, and resilient. And finally, uh, we always have an eye on the planet and we have some projects coming up that lift up ideas around the kinds of regenerative thinking and design that will protect the earth for future generations. So if any of that is exciting to you or you could see yourself using that kind of content to accelerate your work, um, we would love to hear from you and, and work with you on building, uh, advancing new narratives, um, building stronger networks and advancing change in distributed leaderful ways. So with that, do we have some questions? Yes, I've pulled some up. And so let's just, we'll just ping pong back and forth and um, okay, hopefully get to most of that. Uh, so the first question I'm seeing here is from Lisa Gardner Springer. And she asks, curious if your studies look at the impact when movies coordinate with other media, like articles, books, and podcasts. So I think that and um, harkens back to um, Bridget's quote that you shared, Samantha, about consistent shared uh, narrative experiences with diverse perspectives. And I would add to that diverse formats. So um, we've seen uh, studies, we have some, we work often with the um, organization Amplifier, who's a, a, a school awardee um, in terms of a, a school grantee and has been at the forum in the past. And they do um, art, uh, static art that you hang on your walls. And they have some amazing research about how having a poster um, like the Obama um, series around hope uh, can actually influence how kids treat each other in a classroom. Um, podcasts, they go right in your ears. They're a different kind of media, um, but they have deep, deep um, impact because of the intimacy of a podcast experience. Um, even songs so that, that, have, that are oriented around values and vision that align with the narratives you're trying to push forward. Um, there are all sorts of, and curricula is something we do a lot at, 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 at participant books. So 100% yes, yes, yes. As you're designing your work, think about all, all different kinds of media 
Um, the thing that associates film is that it's actually made to watch together, and that's an important piece of the puzzle, which is the sort of unified experience of watching content together, which is different from the intimate experience of either reading or listening. Um, let me just look at... Uh, How's you do, Holly? I'm just going to build on that and just share. The, you know, when I think about the theory of that we heard from Bridget Ev Evans about what narratives are. It's really a, com a, a continuation of lots of different stories and lots of different media to create that immersive experience. So really, I feel like the more stuff, the more stories, the more platforms you're using to reinforce the same set of values and ideas over and over again, the more powerful. I think a one-off is not the optimal. What you want is exactly um, Lisa, what you're suggesting, which is um, coordinating across a lot of different types of stories, storytellers, and platforms. So, okay, Samantha, I pulled another one up. So this is Shafat Khan, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. Um, <clears throat> question for the panel. How do we tell stories of change by escaping the complexities of tokenism in who is implementing solutions? To promote a narrative that everyone has the power to create change could be difficult if there's always one hero or heroine. That's a great question. Um, and something that I've, I've thought a lot about because in the craft of storytelling, I th the, the hero's journey is such a well used um, structure. And so you, you do see this repetition of that sort of single hero conquering, um, conquering a problem. And one of the ways that I've practically um, thought to, to wrestle with this in, 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 in the execution of film-based campaigns is thinking about the overarching design of the experience from beginning to end. You know, we often like, panels are often like an afterthought. I feel like people pull a bunch of random people together, obviously not here at the forum, but in, um, you know, in, 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 in other spaces. And I found that if you're really intentional with like, who are you using the screening experience to lift up what other stories are you telling you know how can you make sure there's representation of a lot of different folks with lived experience who are, who are affected directly who are implementing the solution in small ways and at scale um you know i think that's where the magic is that sort of one area is really thinking through the curation of how you both pull the event together um, another way i've also found to be effective is um we often accompany film screenings with like that little reel that you can play before and or after and so using that as an opportunity to because the, the, there's always a question after like what can i do or how can i make a difference you know right after the after people that ha have that sort of emotional experience and so telling a story in the answer to that question by highlighting just again the range of folks um, who are working on 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 solving it um, i think is a, just another way into it but there's again lots of room for creativity here and it's a really good point because it's so important as a central design principle to bring into the work. Yeah, and I do actually want to underscore where we see a power for films um, that, you know, the hero narrative is, we know that it's not one individual that makes change. Um, at, although, as Samantha said, it can be the challenge of, of a narrative story arc about an individual's journey. Um, but what we hope for in um, our impact work is that stories of individuals that people can see uh, that we can unlock agency, unlock a sense of purpose, um, get somebody on the pathway of being engaged in making change. Because um, once you've done it once, it, it's 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 fulfilling um, to sort of seek purpose and to, to to make a difference around something that's bigger than yourself. And so that that idea that an individual story on the screen can actually unlock individual participation um, is one that's sort of foundational to our goal as a company, which is widespread participation in crafting the future we wanna see. Um, all right, Holly, I'm gonna throw the next question to you. Um, another great question um, from Safia Goradia. Again, apologies if I'm getting your name wrong. Um, are there opportunities for funders to invest in narrative film in collaboration with others? There are a number of opportunities like this in the doc film space, so curious about narrative film. So I'm not aware of a narrative film fund per se that exists the same way like um, Impact Partners exist or some other, um, uh, the Perspective Fund where folks have come together um, 
to fund narrative uh, film. Certainly, my hope in the future is there is more of that in the um, philanthropic space because we're seeing in an interconnected world how powerful global narratives can be for change. And, you know, documentaries are um, often much more targeted from an issue perspective. Uh, so they can advance work in a very targeted way because the takeaway is clear, but they don't normally get the sort of hundreds of millions of people who view them the same way big narrative films do. And so there's a great promise um, in forwarding some of the work that we're all trying to do together. And we're seeing this in our consistent slate of narratives around um, redesigning for equity, because the shared consciousness that can happen with a widely distributed narrative film uh, can accelerate movements in ways that are spectacular. Uh, I hope you saw some of that actually with our two case studies around Judas and, and Dark Waters. Had those been documentaries, we may not have been able to um, uh, support, you know, the, the 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 organizations that have been doing this work for years in the same way because the, those movies penetrated the public consciousness through all sorts of touch points across sort of the press and promotion of, of narratives. So I'm not personally aware, Samantha, I don't know if you are, of a sort of narrative film fund, but I certainly hope as a practitioner in the space that we think about that more um, in terms of sort of philanthropic support for narrative uh, film. I think, and I just want to underscore, there's a ton, I feel like it's wide open space. There's a ton of potential. I hope that's one of the things that uh, spark we put in people's minds is how can we as a community come together and create the infrastructure to work more around all sorts of storytelling, including narrative, including doc, including uh, radio and podcasts, et cetera. So but there's a lot of, I think, opportunity in the narrative space for sure. So I have another question for you, Samantha. Um, Radha Rajkotia, are there examples that the panelists or others can provide for how this has been done in non-US contexts? And I have an immediate thought, but go ahead. I mean, definitely, yes, 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 there's so many. Um, one, one just first thought, I just want to give a shout out to the Doc Society, who is one of the just smartest networks uh, in the space, just thinking about media and film for social change. If you're not familiar with them, you should get familiar with them. They're awesome. They do their high five award um, and they have just uh, dozens of case studies from all around the world. And they do their um, good pitch local all around the world in all sorts of contexts with all kinds of storytelling. So I'd say like, first stop, go there, check it out. They have done a brilliant job. Um, you know, just off the top of my head, as I think about, um, you know, our direct experience, um, my direct experience, um, one was um, learned a lot uh, bringing Girl Rising to India specifically and seeing the, the, both the challenges of translating a, a piece of media that was produced uh, in the United States and, and also the opportunity. And so in that work, we worked, you know, really trying to get harness um, uh, the power of narrative infrastructure, uh, uh, media and messengers. We worked with Star TV, we worked with big Bollywood movie stars and, um, and cut the film and translated into different languages locally and just did a ton of experimenting to see like when it worked and when it didn't work. And so that was just an experience that we had that I encourage folks to, to, to check out. The other one, again, from our direct lived experience is um, uh, we did a campaign around boy, the boy who harnessed the wind, um, which is, uh, you know, based on the true story of William Kim Kwamba uh, and his sort of incredible ingenuity. Um, and uh, we partnered with Sunshine Cinemas and just brought that to communities across uh, Southern Africa and used it to spark imagination and storytelling and thinking um, around um, you know, the, the possibilities of, of innovation and youth entrepreneurship and all that kind of stuff community by community. So that's another study I might call out. Um, uh, so, our, so while you look for a question, I'm just going to, um, you go ahead and look for the question and I'm going to underscore, um, I was going to say the Doc Society, um, and underscore that their website has an extraordinary impact field guide. I think that's what it's called, um, a field guide for impact producers that has um, extraordinary, uh, it's an extraordinary set of um, frameworks, tools, um, research, support for anyone who's trying to build an impact campaign around a film. 
um, and certainly can be used alongside the learning from we both learn what we learn from them so um, can be used a lot uh, alongside this this learning uh, this seminar as well um, here's another question um, uh, from uh, Rick Reed uh, funders like your the hero's journey and the exceptional leader organized organization Aligned networks are far more powerful, but require long game funding. Any thoughts on how to facilitate a change in the funder mindset? Oh, and before you go, Holly, I just want to give a quick shout out as we're fangirling on Doc Society, that they have a Scar World Forum panel tomorrow at uh, 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and obviously translate that into all the local times, but I just want to give that a shout out tomorrow. Great, thanks. Um, so to Rick's question about um, collaborative network building, I think actually um, I, I've been seeing at, at the forum, certainly this real interest and in a lot of panels that are talking more about how could um, funders start thinking about um, supporting network building and supporting you know, sort of the backbone um, of ecosystems. Uh, for us, we're very interested in connecting in to networks that already exist, because what we see our jo job as, and it actually links to this um, the qu this question from um, Canon Hersey, how can you sustain relationships with movements after the marketing is done? How to be a genuine player in the movements and not just movement using the movement for the success of the film. So Canon, that is really interrelated with with Rick's question about the importance of supporting networks and the and the and the work that is the, the investment that's needed to create the networks. Um, because you're absolutely right, Canon, you know, participants content is like a heartbeat. You know, we release and we have, a, we have about six months of a lot of activity. So we create a lot of energy at the beginning. The launch of the film is like a dose of activity for the network. And then we have another movie coming down the pike. So we have to sort of, um, you know, um, it's like a skateboard ramp. We try to make it as high as we can and get the skateboard to run as long as it can. Um, but we move on from movie to movie to movie. And so our goal on the impact side um, is to try to align with as many partners around the film so that they can use the energy of the shifting zeitgeist and the visibility of the film from the actual the film marketing campaign to advance their their impact work. So. Um, you know, I'd love to think that um, that especially on a narrative, you know, if our networks get bigger and bigger and bigger, we could potentially actually impact the success of the film. And for me, that's good in many ways, because the more successful the film is, the more people are getting the shared consciousness around the ideas that are in the film. So I see them as compatible, not as um, as, as intention. And what our goal is, is to be better partners on the, on the coming into the network and on, um, on the sort of denouement of, 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 of the work around a particular film. So we're really trying to figure out how can we be better at the front end of um, creating the right relationship with our partners and leave them in a better place to continue the work than they were before we came in. Because we do understand that the work around orienting around a movie while it's in release, it's a lot of work for, for nonprofit organizations that may not have planned for that in their annual budget. And so that's something that we're really wrestling with internally. How can we be better partners for the moment of acceleration and leave folks in a better position after? And that relates to Rick's question, which is if there's a funding collaborative that can help those partners support the work into the long term, carry the narrative forward, carry the, 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 the narrative experiences, forward, um, then we're really starting to work in collaboration, each doing the thing that we're good at. I think we're I at think time. Close. Yes. Um, so thank you all so much um, for joining us today. Um, we have really enjoyed putting this presentation together. And our greatest and deepest hope is that it is helpful um, in your work and um, that we look forward to learning and collaborating and lifting new narratives and building resilient systems with you. Samantha, did you wanna say something before we sign off? Thank you so much for joining and hope, hope there's ways that our paths cross and we find ways to use movies together to make the world a little bit better. Thank you so much.